Testing, testing, one, two, three, and we are here and live. Good morning. It is me, the coding train. I, I, again, this doesn't happen very often, so I have to tell this story once again. I just realized I told the story before, but somebody on uh, Fourth Avenue in uh, South Slope, Brooklyn, said, "Hey, coding train." I said, "That's me. I am coding train." <clears throat> Good morning, you are watching The Coding Train with me, Coding Train. <laughs> I'm gonna stop saying that over and over again. Um, this was a little touch and go this morning whether or not I was going to be able to be here because I feel even more unprepared than usual. Usually I'm very not prepared for this. Today I am just completely not prepared for this. But I didn't want to get too far behind. It is my goal, it is my mission to stream once per week, not every week throughout the whole year, but during the fall season, during the spring season, and during the summer season. So this coding train happens according to an academic calendar. I have my fall coding train season, my spring coding train season, and then the summer. Um, and this fall is what you're seeing right now, which is mostly going to be focused on content related to my introduction to machine learning for the arts course. However, I am still doing coding challenges. Um, I've got to get back into the rhythm of that. Um, I do have a coding challenge video that not, not you haven't seen unless you are a Coding Train member, um, uh, which will be released later this afternoon if I can get my act together as soon as this is over and, and finish making sure the captions are working and there's like a thumbnail and all that nonsense. So I'm very excited to, uh, to release that video later this afternoon. So stay tuned for that if you want to see it now. Um, it's it's uh, sitting there as a like members only video. If um, anybody wants to paste that into the chat, you could take a break from watching me live, join, and watch that. But I'm really not. I'm not. I'm not here plugging that you need to join or anything. Look, it's a mug, a coding tray mug. <laughs> I found it in the kitchen here at uh, NYU where I'm live broadcasting because I bought it and then I put it in the kitchen and it's still there. No one stole it and took it home, which is very nice. Hello to India. Uh, <laughs> Jerma Vinsmoke writes, I usually watch him in 2x speed, but can't increase the speed in live video. Oh yeah? <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to the Guardian Grain. Uh, that's a good live stream that I do from NYU every morning when I did code to the stuff. Ah! No, it didn't work. I can't do it. <clears throat> um, by the way, the, the new video series that I'm launching today, I'm spending way too much talking about this because <laughs> I'm definitely lower your expectations. First of all, the, I messed up some stuff that I didn't do very well in this first video that I think I could improve. But um, I'm trying to go for a more like relaxed, calm, meditative vibe. Whereas these live streams tend to be hyper frenetic as you might be aware of. I'm also, once again, I was like moving some furniture, tweaked my back a little bit, so I'm moving a little bit more slowly today. But I think I'm gonna be fine. All right. Um, what, why don't you make a video on making the Pac-Man game? Maybe you can add AI to it later, right, Sujal? I want to make a video on the Pac-Man game. I definitely do. I think the, the uh, some of the games that I want to eventually do, like Pac-Man, Tetris, are uh, involve quite a bit more than, say, Flappy Bird, the Chrome Dinosaur game. Even Pong was like quite complicated <laughs> for me, at least. So I haven't figured out a good way to approach that. I need a full like two-hour live stream to do it, probably, or I need to do it with this alternate um, way of creating a coding video that I'm doing at home and which would then just be sort of edited so it would be more digestible. But um, yeah, uh, what, do I, what else do I have to say? So what's happening today? Ah, first, let me thank, I, I, have, I just want to say, I have the corrected <laughs> um, brilliant.org uh, link here. Uh, thank you to Coding Train's live stream sponsor of last stream and this stream and uh, the rest of the streams this month, hopefully. Um, Brilliant.org slash coding train. Brilliant.org is a website with a lot of interactive courses and puzzles. I'll uh, later during this live stream go and look at the, what the daily challenge is today and try to solve it, and all of you will solve it much more uh, quickly. <laughs> um, but uh, check out brilliant.org at brilliant.org slash coding train if you have not. Um, okay. 
Uh, look at this. I, by the way, I love, not a sponsor, but I love this Elgato Stream Deck. It is so much fun. I just got to fill it with more stuff. So today I would like to, I have a few things I want to try to attempt to do today. And I put them in the title of this video. Can I find that anywhere? <laughs> That's my list. I, don't know. Um, I want to look at the um, body picks model in um, ML5. I'm a little bit torn about this because I hear through the grapevine that a new body picks model is coming <laughs> and it's going to be much you know, faster, more accurate, better. So I probably should wait, but I want to try to uh, make a video with that and look at that in comparison to the UNet face model that I looked at earlier this week. Um, next week, I should point out that if you're trying to like figure out what kind of stuff I'll be covering, um, I tend to make videos that go along with a course that I'm teaching. So if I go to github.com slash ml5.js, are you seeing this? Yes. Am I standing in front of it? Yes. Let me move this over here. If you go to uh, intro ML arts IMA, and I'm going to look here on the syllabus here. Um, this is the uh, syllabus for the course. And one of the thi most of this stuff, everything that is weeks four, five, and six, um, is not really ready for me to do the video tutorials because we're still adjusting some, there's some bugs and some of the function names. So I'm going to come back to four, five, and six. Everything that was in uh, one, two, and three, I've actually already made videos about. They're in the Beginner's Guide to Machine Learning uh, playlist, except for uh, UNet face model and body pick. So I'm like going back, and that, those were those were things that were in week two here. Um, and then next week in my course, I'm going to look at Sketch RNN, which I have already made a video about, and this Magenta model, which uh, is a melody generator. Um, I want to look at that as well. In theory, I would like to do that today, but I think I might need to do a little prep for that. <laughs> um, so, but one of the things that doesn't work so well with Sketch RNN is drawing interactively. So, Sketch RNN, if you, uh, I made some videos about this previously, is a machine learning model trained on the Google QuickDraw data set. Um, and it will uh, try to make a predictive uh, vector paths to say, uh, draw a cat or draw a snowman or draw. A rainbow. Well, there's, a, there's I think, 345 different uh, drawing categories. So uh, one of the demos that you'll find uh, if you go look at the Sketch RNN uh, model is you start drawing, the user starts drawing, stops, and Sketch RNN finishes the drawing. And I'm trying to make a version of that with ML5 and P5. And David Ha, who's one of the researchers at Google, explained to me that when you're capturing the user's drawing, um, you're capturing at a certain, like basically, sample rate of how many, you know, mouse positions are you capturing per second, and you need to lower that or, or raise that resolution of the path relative to what the machine learning model is expecting. And this is something known as RD. Well, there's uh, not, there are many algorithms for doing this uh, that I have recently learned as I read the Wikipedia page for this stuff on the subway this morning. And one of the more well-known ones. Googling RDP does definitely not come up with this. Um, let's try RDP algorithm. And again, I'm going to need your pronunciation help. Uh, Rams Douglas Puker, I assume that's how you pronounce it, um, is a algorithm. And if I just like zoom way in here, we can see it happening here. So there is this, param this equation, uh, e to the negative x times cosine 2 pi of x, which if you graph it, as this GIF uh, returns back, it looks like this nice curve. And as you adjust this parameter epsilon, you're changing the resolution of the curve. Um, so I um, would like to try this out uh, because I need it in ML5. I, I want it to be a part of ML5 that when you're feeding the points, it will adjust the resolution of the path uh, and, make, and have the model work well. So I want to do that today. Those are my two things, body picks and the Rams, Douglas, Puker algorithm. So this presumably would be a coding challenge or just trying to do this algorithm. And then that would hopefully lay, be like foundation and help for myself or anyone else who wants to contribute this algorithm to like the ML5 utils package. Simon is writing to me, uh, did you see my text file with your plan in it? <laughs> Simon is often like taking notes 
<laughs> Coding Train viewer uh, Simon is taking notes as I speak and often helping me remember things that I've said before. Um, and yes, Simon is pointing out that Brilliant.org has a brand new website design. Um, and then apparently I had a plan. So whatever my plan was before, I don't know what it was, but this is my plan now. <laughs> um, okay. So let me get set up. Let's, I probably should do this first. To be perfectly honest, let's do this. For, this is not, I just thought of this right now. I was going to start with body picks, but um, let's actually just do this first because this is a fun coding algorithm and I think I could do it in processing. Yeah, let's do it. Can anybody tell me how to pronounce, oh, I say, keep saying Rams. Rammer Douglas Puker. Do we know if this is pronounced Puker? Pucker, poker, um, I would love poke, I would love to know. So I think what I'm going to do right now very uh, to, for a starting point is just actually program um, very quickly. And I don't think I'll include this in the edited version of the video, but I'm just going to program a, a processing sketch that uh, draws this curve. There's got to be in Java a constant for um, the uh, for the for for oh wait for um, natural number e right like if I do like ma Java uh, e how do I do this uh, natural number math dot e okay let's try that because I don't think it's in processing math dot e. Uh, let's just see. Do I have to import math? Wait. Oh, oh, I can do, oh, no, 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 but I can use the exp method. Hyperbolic cube, right? Math exp double x. Right, that would be e to the, that's what this is, right? E to the, uh, e to the negative x. So I can do. Uh, exponent, is that in processing, negative x? It is, weird, is that, um, let's go look at the processing reference. Yes, e to the one, exponent one is the number. Okay, perfect, that's much better. Uh, and cosine of two pi x. I think I don't need the 2 pi because, oh, x goes between 0 and 5. Oh, I see. Cool. Um, maybe I should do this, in the, do this in the video. This is so, like, little. But uh, times cosine, and this will go between 0 and 5. Cosine 2 pi times x. Uh, and then y, I, I should map that. I'm gonna call this val, <coughs> uh, map val, which probably has a range. I don't know, what's the range of this? I'm just gonna make a guess. It's between negative one and one to between like a uh, height, the bottom down to zero. Oh, and I need to draw it. <laughs> uh, 
and set the vertex x, y, uh, stroke 255, uh, no fill. Oh, 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 oh. I want it to, oh my goodness, I've like lost my mind here. Uh, X, this is X. And um, X has a value between zero and width I in this equation. Uh, this is actually like pixel X. All right, fine. <laughs> I don't know, uh, <laughs> X val, Y val, let's do this. Uh, this is gonna be pixel X. Pixel, I mean, I'm just going to use x and y for the pixel x. Boy, this is confusing. Map x between 0 and 5. Then the uh, y val is actually uh, this formula with x val. And then the actual y is mapping y val. There we go. And this has to be x plus plus. There we go. <laughs> there, I've got it. <laughs> that took me a minute. Uh, oh, Simon's giving me the... Um, the, the, um, the list of uh, coding challenge possibilities. I do need to spin the wheel before I leave. So by the way, I have to leave at around 11.30, so that's an hour and a half from now. Um, and I do, I do, there's gonna be actually a really difficult part of this. I believe the algorithm, I've never done this before. Uh, I didn't <laughs> try to do this in advance, which sometimes I'll do, uh, which helps. Um, but I believe part of the algorithm is looking for, at the distance between a, a point and a line. So I'm going to need a formula or algorithm for doing that, I think, in RDP. I read the Wikipedia page a few days ago. That's the extent of preparation I've done. Um, OK. So this is good. And I'm going to save this as RDP algorithm. Did, did we get any? Uh, I, somebody in Slack, did anybody in the chat help me with this pronunciation? Um, so this, I'm going to think about how to do this, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. Okay, so this is, look at that, that's kind of pretty. Let me make it stroke weight four, just to like sort of see it there. I like that. I wish that processing, I used to do this and there's a way to get it to do this. I can't figure out how. I want it to every time I stop and run it again to keep the sketch in the same location. How do I do that? There was a way. Uh, now I'm going to go off uh, the rails here and look into that for a minute. If we do like frame, set location, no. Processing window set location. I used to frame that lo location. Uh, and setup won't work. Reposition canvas. Right? This should work. I've done that before. But I think something changed. Um, well, this is from 2014. Maybe I need to do it in settings. <laughs> Does anybody know? <laughs> it's really bothering me. I really want to do this tutorial, but I feel like if I every time I run it, if I'm kind of like scooching it over here, that's going to be a pain. Can I find something more recent? Oh, 2019. Frame moved. If frame moved. Frames. If not frame. This is like a court. This is like a post from. Oh, asked four years ago. Active eight months ago. Uh, surface. That's what it is. It's changed the surface. Yeah! Look at that. That's good. That'll work for me. You can see how it like, and I assume, 
no. Oh, okay, it can put it in setup. Great. So it's a little bit of a flicker. I wish I could get rid of that little flickering thing, but um, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Deal with it, Dan. Focus on algorithm. No, you know, I sometimes I need things to be neat and tidy in a way that I can handle. But time is a ticking. Before we begin, the Rames, Rammer, Douglas, <coughs> Puker <coughs> algorithm, it is time to read some random numbers. 65,076, 87,960. I need progressive lenses. I have got to go to the eye doctor. 92,013. I cannot read these numbers. 60,169. 49,176. By the way, I think I look much older in this new studio. I feel like whatever the lighting was or something in the previous studio, it like washed out my gray hair. You could see the like imperfections. <clears throat> I can just get those like soft focus filters, you know, that the soap operas will put on the lenses here, because that, that'll make me look prettier. <clears throat> I went down an internet rabbit hole, by the way, uh, and I'll talk about that another time. Red Foo, are you watching? No, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Say hi in the chat if you are. I doubt you are because you're in the West Coast and it's 6 a.m. Oh <clears throat> 70,471. 15,794. 68,622. 59,161. 14,476. 75,074. 2,465. 34,977, 48,319, 53,626, <laughs> 8,342, 81,912. It might seem weird to you, but this actually really relaxes me, and I feel much better. My back hurts less. I think I probably should get some new music, um, uh, but uh, it's something. All right. Uh, it's pronounced poi, rhymes with toy, cur, like the start of Kermit, poiker. Oh, that's great. Rammer Douglas Poiker. Rammer Douglas Poiker. Okay. Uh, Rafael is saying I must buy this book. You can actually go <laughs> to Amazon.com slash shop slash coding train, maybe? No, the coding train. Yes, and um, you could go here to uh, the trains, unicorns, and more category. I mean, I'm not, and right here, a million, this is the book. Uh, um, and I, but I really want to find um, something I've been looking for and I haven't searched recently, like on eBay, is like original print, like uh, eBay maybe, if I look on eBay. This is dangerous. Ah, here we go. Um, 1955. So is this authenticated? I'm bidding on this right now. $29 for 12 months. What is, at least a dozen missing pages. No, see? Tape on the spine, but readable, not super fragile. I want this. I would definitely uh, use my coding train funds to get this copy, but it has some few dozen missing pages. 
Buy it now, add to cart. 20, what does this mean? This is like, uh, I can like, oh, look at this. Urgh, go away. Um, this is why I don't like, why am I logged into all my accounts? Usually I'm, the point is I'm not. Seller information. All right, I'm gonna come back to this later. Let's look at some pictures. Oh, it's got like writing in it. I really wanna find a complete, uh, a complete uh, uh, version, uh, original print of this, especially because I am coming up on, I mean, I don't know if we'll get there. At this point, everybody's probably unsubscribed or nobody new is subscribing, but I am kind of, the momentum is going towards one million subscribers. You know, if we look at a graph, uh, Russ is saying it wouldn't pay that much for uh, missing pages. Um, so I would really like to have the original version and I want to read the entire book on a live stream, but uh, I, the, that would take a really long time. I don't know how to, uh, um, how to make that happen. So if you have ideas, if, you find, if anyone can find somebody on the internet selling an original print, hopefully without missing pages, the condition is acceptable here. Let me go back um, and see. These are all just you know reprints, what I already have. Uh, Originally published in 1955, uh, full text downloadable. So this is good because I could do some kind of clever, at least I could do a coding challenge where I create the audiobook. Weird. Oh. Interesting. There's a fluorescent light in this room. I have um, some actual like LED lighting for it to illuminate myself, but there's a fluorescent light in this room <laughs> that I have not been able to, how to figure out how to turn off. There's like buttons on the wall. They don't work with it, but it just went off and then it went back on. Okay, <clears throat> Raymer. Okay, Raymer, this is awesome. My delaying and stalling tactic has worked. <laughs> went off again. Is that, can you, are you noticing it going on and off? If I'm being honest, this is trying to do this is probably going to take the rest of the live stream. But let's see. Because let me read this over before I start coding it to understand it. The starting curve is an ordered set of points or lines, and the distance dimension is epsilon greater than zero. Okay, so I have that. I don't have an epsilon variable. The algorithm recursively divides the line. Initially, it is given all the points between the first and last point. Okay. It automatically la marks the first and last point to be kept. So I'm probably going to create an array that has um, all the points and then a new one of like points that I'm going to keep. It then finds the point that is furthest from the line segment with the first and last points as endpoints. This point is obviously furthest on the curve. Uh, from the approximate line segment. If the point is closer than epsilon to the line segment, then any points not currently marked to be kept can be discarded. If the point furthest from the line segment is greater than epsilon from the approximation, then that point must be kept. Ah, all right, I understand this. <laughs> I understand this. I will definitely need distance from, I, by, I'm having a major case of deja vu here. I th uh, uh, of Googling this exact algorithm on the coding train before. And I've done this uh, distance from a point to a line. I've, um, I feel like I've done this in a way where I just like took the formula off of Wikipedia and some people complained. I've done this in the Nature of Code book. You program for long enough, you learn stuff and you completely forget it. And then you have to go look up your own tutorial on it. <laughs> it's really funny how that happens. <laughs> Uh, dot product. I think I can use the dot product here for doing like scalar projection. And don't I have a section in this book on that? So maybe I should just, okay. Yeah, this is it here, right? So if I have, um, I have a function that does this. It finds the normal point and then that's the, dis the, the distance between those two points is the distance. But do I have this as like processing code in an obvious way? Um, right. 
Start and predicted location. A, B, I think I have this in my examples. Oop, this is somebody else's GitHub repo. This is mine. Examples processing, agents, a path fall. Let's go with path, is there like a an example, simple scalar projection. All right, yeah, this is what I'm looking for. Let's see what this does. Ah, okay, look at this. Look at this processing example that I made at one point in my life. So this is gonna be very helpful to me. Let's uh, alter this a little bit. A, B, and mouse. So um, let's call mouse actually C. And let's do the following. Um, A, B. And C, let me just make this demonstration a little bit better. Oh, look at C, A, B. Eh, could be worse. Uh, let's put the points, let's also put it down a little bit. And let's make uh, text size 16. Okay, great. So this is going to be an, this is going to be super helpful. I'm recording to disk. Yes, the light going on and off is noticeable. There's some interference in the audio randomly. I did it in ray casting. Oh. So I also have it in the ray casting example. Let's look for that. Uh, <clears throat> but I think that was just testing. Well, let's see. Let's go to uh, ray casting coding challenge. Oh, I forgot to do community contributions. I'm really trying to do that more regularly. Um, a download co view code processing. Uh, let's see. Where is it in this? Particle look walls, probably in there. The walls are a line segment, a boundary object. Cast wall. Ray.cast wall, and then this. Ah, okay, so the function I'm looking for is cast. So this might actually be a better place for me to pull it out from. Boundary is not, oh, ray. Oh, wait. Cast, yeah. Oh, I see. Right, this is when I did it before, and I just used this formula. So, could I just take this? Maybe I should take this formula and Wait, x1, y1, x2, y2 is the wall. Oh, but I'm casting a ray in a particular direction. So this is not giving me the normal. This is giving me the distance. This is two line segments. So actually, this is not what I want. This is not what I want. Um, yeah. To see if two lines intersected. Yes, yeah, so this is not what I want. Uh, The, um, the nature of code example is what I want. And I, presumably that's also in here. Like distance of AX plus BY, well, I'm, 
Yeah, presumably I'm doing this, <laughs> which is the same thing that I derived and explained in. Uh, so I'm going to do that here. I've got this I don't need. I've got processing open. And here we go. Great. So I've got the scalar projection example. I have got um, sketch, how do I do this? The RDP coding challenge. Whoops, how do I? Why is that not switching? Shouldn't, if I go here, it switch? All right, just do that. Huh, interesting. That's like, why is this bug happening where it's not switching? Boy, a lot of people keep um, asking about doing like log averages. I don't know what I did to like cause this desire for so many people to comment about a video on log averages. I think that has to do something with like the ukulele tuner, which I did in this weird way with the machine learning model. Yeah, so I have so many things I want to do and, and have a list to do, so I, I can't get to everything. I would like to though. Thank you for the suggestion. Okay. Raymer, Douglas, Poiker. Raymer, Douglas, Poiker. That's how I'm choosing to pronounce it. Is everybody okay with that? Anish uh, Chapagai writes, I know nothing, but I'm still watching. I don't know why. Hopefully, uh, maybe, yeah, and then Mr. Kamikaze writes, you'll learn something. Hopefully, maybe you'll just be entertained or soothed. Probably not soothed. There goes the light again. Uh, back on. Um, <coughs> uh, but I would say that if you are interested in following along, um, I might suggest going back to the uh, playlist, which is just called Code, an introduction to programming with P5JS. That will be the place to um, get started from uh, scratch. OK. It is time. Let me make sure I have this whiteboard camera going. Um, oh, I love this whiteboard. I need to do like the white balancing and stuff and focus with this camera, and I just didn't get to do it. I don't think this is going to work as an eraser, but this should. I need some water to go with it. Shoot. Um, how do you spell this? Uh, Rams, Douglas, Poiker, Raymer, Douglas, Poiker. I keep saying Rams, I don't know why. There we go. <laughs> Today's coding challenge, thumbnail. <laughs> Probably not. Is the audio OK? Uh, people are asking, where does the whiteboard start and end? So uh, the whiteboard starts right over here. It's actually beyond the camera's view. And it ends, you can see this line right here. It ends right here. And it's not paint. This is a uh, wallpaper. And in fact, I'm so excited about this. I don't know when I'm going to make use of this, but it is magnetic. So um, <coughs> if I had uh, something like, I don't know if it's strong enough, these magnets. <laughs> Maybe with two. I could keep like a little green cloth. Like, here we go. See? It's magnetic. I don't know. It's fun. I like magnetic things. By the way, does anybody um, subscribe to the Curiosity Box? If you got a Curiosity Box this month, go and look. If you, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure if you Google Curiosity Box, you'll find it. Go and look in the little magazine. There's like a little. There's a page about the coding train, and I, uh, they sent me one of the 
curiosity boxes since I was in there, and it, it's like so great. There's so I'm thinking of subscribing, not a sponsor, but it's like so cool. There's like I have got this crazy like ruler and a Newton's cradle. So many I should bring those things. They're fun. Um, okay. All right, it's time. It's been a really long time. I've been live streaming for almost an hour and have not coded anything. That's not good, but this is how it goes. <clears throat> okay. <gasps> Hello and welcome to a coding challenge. In this coding challenge, I am going to attempt to program the. <laughs> I always just have to uh, <clears throat> just start it over one more time. <clears throat> Ah, Victor writes, I'm alone at university studying discrete mathematics. Thanks for the company. Hello, I'm so glad that we can be virtually together today. You studying discrete mathematics, me trying to remember something that I might have done or studied years and years ago. Uh, 46 minutes, says Jan, uh, or Jan, if I've pronounced that incorrectly. All right, here we go. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to a coding challenge. In this coding challenge, I'm going to make what you're seeing right here, which is a curve lowering its resolution. I'm, the same curve is being drawn over and over again with fewer and fewer points. This is known as the <gasps> Raymer Douglas Poiker algorithm. Now, there are many different algorithms for doing this same exact task, but this is a particularly well known one. The reason why I want to implement it is. Hold on, let me pull this up. Uh, RDP, hold on. There we go, this is what I'm looking for. Um, Uh, okay, hold on, hold on, everybody. We're getting there, we're getting there. Uh, I wish this did cats, but snowflakes will have to do. Maybe I'll just go to the cat one, even though it's not sketch RNN. No, no, no. Hello. Uh, oh, right. Okay. Uh, hold on. Cats. Oh, it's, yeah, cats. There we go. These are actual cats, but. <laughs> so, Joshua Noble. Hey, is it that Joshua Noble? Hi, Joshua Noble. <laughs> right, snowflakes are really just abstract cats, which is quite true. By the way, <laughs> if you haven't followed my cats on Instagram, it's mango and goose, all one word, mango and goose. If you like cute kittens that are now getting kind of big, they're not going to be kittens for much longer, follow Mango and Goose on Instagram. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I am working on a new example with the ML5.js library that allows you to draw with the computer or with a particular machine learning model, that model being Sketch RNN, which I've used before in a video about snowflakes. And uh, that model was trained on the QuickDraw data set. So here is an example of redrawing doodles of cats from the QuickDraw data set that I also did in a previous coding challenge. And in order to draw along with it, I need to capture the user's path. The, um, let me say that again. Because remember, I don't like to say user anymore. <laughs> I have to correct myself. I need to capture the person, the person who's drawing the, the path of their mouse. And the resolution of what they're drawing might be capturing so many points along the way that that's going to confuse the machine learning model. And a researcher at Google who worked on SketchRNN explained this to me. Um, 
uh, on, on GitHub. And so one of the things that I want to add to ML5.js is this RDP algorithm to be able to reduce, scale the resolution of a path that's being drawn. So in this coding challenge, I'm not going to worry about ML5 or SketchRNN or any of that. I'm just going to try to recreate exactly this. I'm going to start with this formula. I'm going to draw this graph. And then I'm going to vary a parameter called epsilon and see if I can lower the resolution of this particular graph. I think, is resolution the right term that I to use here? Hmm. Will this algorithm reduce unnecessary points on the drawing? Yes. Yes. There are other applications of this kind of algorithm. Certainly, if you want to increase the performance of a graphics application, you can use RDP to basically remove unnecessary points. I mean, the, the, what's necessary, what's unnecessary is a complicated question, but you can reduce the complexity of a drawing to maybe speed up performance of a graphics application without the viewer, the person watching, really noticing. Granularity, fidelity. Um, I'm not, really, I'm not really sure if resolution is the word I'm looking for here. People in the chat are uh, suggesting granularity, fidelity. But th I, think, I think all of these words kind of describe what it is I'm going for. The number, the distance between uh, individual points along a path. Point granularity, I guess, maybe is the technical term for this. Let's see if it says, find a similar curve with fewer points. Yeah. And uh, on Wikipedia, I think a nice way of describing this is the purpose of the algorithm uh, is to find a similar curve with fewer points. So depending on what that epsilon is, let's say, can we approximate that curve with the least number of points, you know, fewer points turning the epsilon up, more points turning the epsilon down. Um, okay. Mm, okay. Point density is another term, lots of terms. <coughs> Let's see here. Okay. <coughs> This is what I'm starting with. So I've written a little code before. If you want to, <laughs> holy shift, men is a new thing that I learned the other day. <clears throat> okay. I wrote a little code beforehand to get so that. Mm, I wrote a little code beforehand so that I had it to get started. If you want to see me write this code, you can find the link to the live stream associated with this edited coding challenge. It's not edited right now as I'm doing it, but it will be later. <laughs> um, and so what I've done here is just taken that mathematical function, which is right here, f of x equals e to the negative x of cosine 2 pi x, where x between 0 and 5, and I've graphed it in processing. So you can see I'm doing a loop here between 0 and the width of the window in pixels. I'm mapping that x value between 0 and 5. Then I am doing that exact formula. E, uh, e to the x is with the x, x, exp function in processing, cosine 2 pi times that x value, and then taking the result, which is range between negative 1 to 1, and mapping it back to pixels. So if I run this, we'll see I have this graph. But what I need to do now is create an array uh, with all of the points in it. And I think I'm going to end up using an array list, which is always a little bit awkward. But let's do that. So I'm going to say array list. Uh, and let's call that uh, it's going to have p vector objects in it. And again, when I eventually, if I make a JavaScript version of this, it's much simpler to just have a plain array. But a resizable array in Java is a little trickier, so I like to use array lists. Um, call this all points is a new array list with p vectors in it that is empty. And so now I can say here um, all points dot add uh, new p vector, and in p5 it would be create vector, 
uh, x comma y. I think it's an interesting question of should I perform this algorithm on the units that are the uh, in the sort of range of 0 to 5, negative 1 to 1, or should I uh, perform the algorithm on the pixels? I don't think it really matters, but I'm going to do it on the pixels because that's going to be closer to when I do it with like a user-drawn path. So I don't know how long I want this coding challenge to be or how much time I have, but ultimately if I can get this to work, the next step would be have a user draw a path and then play with that curve. Maybe I'll leave that as an exercise to you, the viewer. Okay, so now let's actually not draw here. Let's get rid of the drawing here and let's put that into draw itself. So I'm going to say uh, for every p vector v in all points, uh, 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 vertex and end shape. And I can get rid of the drawing here. By the way, if you're wondering what this surface.set location is, it's just so that when I run the sketch, it'll appear over to the right uh, every single time so it's not obscuring the code a little bit. That's how you can set the prosthetic window to a fixed location. Clean up some of the white space here, because that's, that's how I roll. Now we have all of the points in a list. What's the next step? We'll actually implement the algorithm. Let's read together the algorithm for a moment. <laughs> no, maybe I'll just describe it. Okay. Now that we have all of the points uh, in a list, we, we can iterate over that list, presumably, and implement the algorithm. So what is the algorithm? You can find a narrative description of the algorithm here, and you can also see another nice visualization of it happening. Let me try to diagram for it and, and sort of explain it in my own words the way that I understand it. Well, I don't know if that'll be better than you just reading it. So, you know, skip ahead a minute and read this instead. I, I leave it up to you. By the way, I'm doing more things in silence now when I, I don't need to necessarily be talking through it. And, and the idea that the, when these vi vi uh, coding challenge gets edited, you could kind of speed through me drawing this and it'll just be there. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Also gives me like a moment to breathe here. Do I, I think I probably want more points than this. Oh, this is not a good eraser. That's not gonna work. So I'm using this right now. Just add a couple more points. Um, okay, I don't know how well this is going to work as a demonstration, but we'll try it. So here's a path with one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points. Now, presumably when I actually do the algorithm, there's gonna be lots and lots and lots and lots of points very close together. But to be able to describe it through a diagram, I need a very low resolution or low fidelity uh, curve or path. So the idea of the algorithm is a recursive algorithm. Uh, what I mean by that is we're going to be dividing this set, uh, this like continuous series of points into subsections and applying the same algorithm to those subsections, which then get divided and we apply it to those subsections as well. So that's simply going to make it hard to program, but it is also it's quite elegant and, and lovely. All right, so the first thing that you do is you, uh, we need a list of points that we're going to keep. So we're going to keep start and end. That's the first part of the algorithm, keep start and end. So this is the start and this is the end. So we know at a minimum we need those two points, right? Because in a way, this is an approximation of that curve. It's like the lowest fidelity approximation, but an approximation nonetheless. So now we have, you know, if I label all these A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, 
now we have a list with like A and H in it. The next thing we need to do is we look for the point along the curve that's farthest away from this line segment. By that I mean we look for this distance, the normal from all of these points to the line segment. And just eyeballing it, it's either B or G. Let's, I mean, obviously we can compute this, um, and I think it's G. I have, to, I have to take a break for a second. Thank you to new member, Distensity. Hello, thank you, very kind of you. Oh, Darksider says I seem gloomy today. No, I don't, I don't feel, I do feel a little tired. It's Friday, I'm always tired. It's gray, it's cold, it's a little chillier, but I don't, I don't feel gloomy. And I said fidelity, yes. I'm going to just repeat what I said before. I, I kind of want F. I think this is like B or, B or G is a bad example to pick because it's kind of like just the end point. Um, so let me, let me do something where I adjust this so it's a slightly better demonstration. Uh, let's just say that F is up here. Um, just to make this a much more obvious, uh, what am I saying? Just to make this a much more obvious, <laughs> well, say it again, try it again. Just to make this more obvious, I'm, I'm putting F up here actually because uh, that way we don't have this. It's also like I kind of want something more in the middle. <laughs> I think it'll be a better demonstration of the idea. Okay, so I found the point furthest away from the line. So that now, uh, I think I then test that point against this epsilon value, but l uh, let's come back to epsilon in a second. I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to go back to the Wikipedia page. But what I do is I say, I want to keep that point. So I'm going to keep that point. And now what do I do? I have two more. Now, now this is the recursive part. Now I have another path that goes from A to F and one that goes from F to H. And I apply the same algorithm again. So now I take this line segment and look for these distances from C, D, and B. And I would say, eyeballing it, C is probably the one that's furthest, so I'm going to keep that. And we can see how now, if I stopped here, this is my approximation. I go from A to C to F to H. And I think epsilon has to do with this distance threshold. I think at a certain point we realize the point that I'm keeping is within a certain distance from the curve itself that I can just stop and discard it. I think that's what epsilon is. Let's go back and confirm that. And here's, oh, let, me, let me actually, um, let me just do this for a second. And here's the highlighted section. This is exactly right. If the point furthest from the line segment is greater than epsilon from the approximation, then that point must be kept. So the algorithm is going to recursively call itself over and over again. Um, as long as the points it's keeping are, f are greater than epsilon, once it finds they're less than epsilon, it will stop. So it's not about an exact number of points. It's about a threshold of approximation to the fidelity of the curve. Simon is telling me that E is farther from C than the line. Maybe, he's, maybe Simon is measuring with a ruler. Oh, I didn't see E there. I forgot about E. <laughs> Quick correction, <laughs> thanks to Simon in the chat. I sort of forgot that I had this point E here, which if, I, if this is my approximation, this one is actually the furthest one. So this is actually the one that I would be keeping next, and then I would be recursively subdividing the segment here and checking these. But 
the idea was correct. I just forgot about the point E. <laughs> Let's go try to implement this. Hmm. So I'm trying to think how, I'm thinking about how I want to do this. Do I want to delete point, I want to make an object that like is wraps a p vector and then has like a true or false flag for whether it's been checked or not or should be kept. Um, I need to like, I think I want to like use the index value into the array list probably. So I want to start with start and end the index values. And then I iterate over and find the index value of the closest one. I put those all into a new array. Yeah, I think that'll work. All right. I think this is going to work. I'm not entirely sure the best way to do this, but I'm going to try uh, with creating another array. And I'll call this like RDP points. Uh, is also a new array list. And um, I also want to have a variable called like epsilon. And let's just set that at, I'm going to set that to like 10 pixels right now. That's a kind of, maybe that's a high number. I don't really know. Um, let me do that. Um, okay. And I want to make this ultimately interactive so that I can change the epsilon. But let me just do it right now with a fixed epsilon in setup. So I should have two curves. So for example, if I say RDP points, you know, if I say p vector start equals all points, get the first one. What's going on here? Global variable. What's going on? Oh, semicolon. Yes. No, I don't want to ask Siri. It's a missing semicolon. So this is the first step. Give me the start. Give me the end. And add start and end to this new array. Then presumably, I could also draw the new array and just make it a different color. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. So here we go. That's my low, super low fidelity uh, in visualization of this curve as a line just from the first point to the last point. I'm set up to do this. I think the way to implement a recursive algorithm, the way that I'm thinking about it, is to have a function that returns a point. So I'm going to call the function RDP. I'm going to get a list of points. I'm going to get a, in, two index, uh, index values. I'm going to get a, I'll just call it A and B. So A being the beginning, B being the end. Um, and then let me just, so it doesn't give me an error, let me just write return null here. And the idea is that I am going to find 
the, I'm going to iterate. Um, this is point A, this is point B. I'm going to iterate through all the points and find the one that is furthest from that line segment. So I want to go from i equals a to i is less than b, i plus plus. And I'm going to have a distance. I'm going to have like the record distance. I want to find the furthest one. So the record distance can start at 0. I can make it negative 1 just for the sake of argument. And then I'm going to say uh, the distance. And I need some sort of um, <laughs> Uh, um, I need some, another function that's going to give me the distance between a point and a line. And a way that I could do that is if I think of it this way, I have a point A, I have a point B, I have a point C. If I take this line segment, find this normal point, and find the length of this normal point, that would be the distance. So I need a function that takes three p vectors and gives me the distance between the line between a and b and the point c. So let's try this float. I'll call this line. Oh, I'm in the wrong camera. Don't worry, everybody. So I'm going to create a function. Float distant, line distance. Let's call it line dist between uh, a point C and uh, a point A and a point B. And that's going to return some value. Just put one there for right now. I'm going to have to get the f code to do that at some point. Um, so if the, okay, so the start point is, start is points.getA, end is points.getB, and then Actually, I'm going to go from a plus 1 all the way up to b minus 1. And I'm going to get the, uh, I need to get the uh, you know, current, uh, or just call this point. Let's just call this point. No, that's bad. That's a keyword in, in processing. I mean, it would be fine. But current point is points.get i. So the distance is line distance between current point and start and end. If that distance is greater than, uh-oh, camera, whoa, camera went off. These cameras don't go to sleep. What just happened? Hmm. Loose cable? Loose cable. I just wiggled the cable and it came back. I don't know why that happened. 1048, okay. If, if D is greater than the record distance, then that's the new record distance. And what I want to do is return that point. Um, Uh, I'll call it result, I'll call it furthest. And furthest equals a record, uh, equals current point. And then return furthest. Okay. Oh, am I blurred? Oh, weird, focus. Weird, OK, I can fix this. Thank you, everybody. Um, let me just focus the camera. That was weird. Why does it go out of focus? I'm, I'm focusing on the mug, which is about where I'm standing. <laughs> Better? I think probably I don't need to go back. It's OK if I'm like out of focus for a little bit. I'm going to wait till the cat chat realizes that I fixed it, since you guys are 30 seconds behind. And also to tell me that it looks OK now. 
You know, I could put the camera on autofocus. I just worry about that. This particular camera, oh, whoa. This one went out too. They both went out. There we go. This one is set to autofocus, which is why I can walk up here and you can see uh, the individual hairs in my beard, <laughs> which I kind of like. But uh, this one I have not autofocus. Okay. Okay. All right. Everyone's telling me it looks okay now. So I'm going to uh, leave. that just in there is blurry, and I'll just, God. sorry the camera went out of focus there, I fixed it now. I don't know. Do they reset after one hour and 15 minutes? Maybe they do. Maybe they do, I don't know. These are, the so these are Sony cameras, somebody can look that up for me. Sorry, I was out of focus there. I fixed the camera now. <laughs> okay, so this is my algorithm. It's going to return that furthest point. And where am I calling that function? <laughs> oh, right. I want to call it uh, with the RDP mm, Oh, P vector next point is RDP Right, this is going to be this. Needs, this is where it needs to be recursive. So I want the next point. So I'm going to call my RDP function with all points, and starting at the index zero and a total minus one. Um, starting at the index zero and total minus one. Oh, I need the index. When it comes back, I actually want it to return the index. So I don't want to return. Uh, I want furthest index, Be because I, I want to add it here. Furthest index is negative 1, and then return furthest index. This returns an int. So int is next uh, index is RDP all points. So then I would say RDP, so the uh, RDP points add um, <clears throat> all points get next index and then call RDP again between okay so I should also say start index is 0 end index is total minus 1, start, end index, RDP between, and I haven't, I have to make this recursive, but I'm just thinking this through right now. Uh, RDP, all points, this needs an, start index, next index, and next index, end index. Pa Let me breathe for a second here. I think I might need another function. <laughs> Simon is telling me this would be a good time to do this in JavaScript because I could use a generator function. <laughs> uh, it's true. Start index. I probably fixed that already. Why am I getting a, oh right, start index. This has to be start index. I'm thinking about this. So this is definitely the recursive function, but how do I want to do the recursive call? 
Do I want to call it in, I don't want in here? I don't think so. I think I want another function. That's, that's basically like all of this stuff. I mean, just this part. And then that's what gets called. Hmm. Start end E. Yeah, E doesn't E could be passed in. Array equals, yes, right. Right. Yeah, I think I have a flaw. I have a fatal flaw here, which is that um, <coughs> I need another function. People in the chat aren't just explaining what I'm doing. I'm reading the chat. When would the edited version of the video be uploaded to YouTube? Eh, next week sometime. Within a week. It's actually, I feel sort of longer process now, unfortunately. So the way that I'm uh, doing captions takes a little longer, but it makes for a more accessible video. Um, all right. I'm sorry, I need to like, I kind of need a drink of water. Actually, let me take, can I take a break now and get some water? <laughs> I'm gonna come back to this, because it is 11 o'clock. Um, and uh, I'm gonna finish this, definitely, but um, I think I need to need a short break. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to come back and finish this in like a few minutes. Do while loop. Yeah, that's an, uh, once again, the do, oh, no, you don't know about my do while loop. Uh, return an array. Yeah, that's definitely what I want to do. Everybody's saying return an array. So let me take a short break for a second because I have, I have some new tricks up my sleeve <laughs> to talk to you about uh, today's sponsor. Uh, today's sponsor is uh, brilliant.org. Um, you can go and uh, check out Brilliant.org by going to Brilliant.org slash coding train. Um, Brilliant.org has an entire new homepage design, which now you are seeing this video playing. I pressed a button <laughs> and this is coming up. So, um, you know, one, hopefully if you watch the coding train, you are discovering, at least through my lens, that doing programming and trying stuff with math it's, it doesn't have to be dull, it can be fun and interactive. And so Brilliant is a problem solving website. They also have an app that, um, has, that, that has like a similar vibe to it, I would say, with a hands-on approach. So me, here, you're just like having me talk at you. Wow, the camera went off again. But I, fortunately, you're not seeing the camera right now, so that's fine. Um, but uh, Brilliant has all these hands-on interactive lessons, and one of the things that I'm really excited about that I'm trying to dig into more are the courses. So now, what you're seeing here are all of the courses um, that are currently on uh, Brilliant.org. So there's a lot of math courses. Um, there's a, a neural networks course, artificial intelligence course. There's computer science fundamentals course, uh, which is you know goes along with a lot of the content on this website. So um, there's storytelling, there's code writing, there's interactive challenges um, for curious people who want to um, excel at problem solving and understand the world. So um, you can sign up for free at brilliant.org slash coding train, but um, if you want to unlock all of the courses, uh, you can get a premium subscription and, and uh, with, with that link, it'll give you 20% off. So what I typically like to do if I come back to this view, the camera is, again is off, I'm not sure why, this is happening. Um, I think there must be like a loose cable. I'm just going to unplug it and plug it back in, which is what did it before. Um, what I often like to do is try to solve, uh, and once again, the focus is off. Ugh, it's so weird. Why does it change the focus every time I turn it off and on? If I spent more time learning on brilliant.org, I might come up with some algorithm to autofocus the camera. Um, <coughs> so what I like to do on the coding train, I am a little bit short on time today, is go to the Brilliant uh, website and look at the daily challenge. 
It's funny, I went to, my son is in fifth grade and I went to his curriculum night at his school yesterday <laughs> and the, the math teacher put up this problem and it has to do with chip counting. Apparently chip counting is this way that you can learn like base three and different uh, number uh, bases. Um, and uh, I was like, oh, this challenge that the math teacher in fifth grade at the school just put up on the board is exactly like a daily challenge in uh, Brilliant.org. I took a picture of it and thought maybe I would. But, um, so this is a daily challenge that I think, math and logic, that I think goes along with the channel. Um, I'm going to put it as a challenge to you, actually, uh, when I take a break and get some water. Um, so uh, let's look at the challenge together. Cryptograms are puzzles where capital letters stand in for the digits of a number. If the same letter is used twice, it's the same digit in both places, and if different letters are used, the digits are also different. So, uh, so here, uh, B, obviously, what is the value of B? Wait, what? <laughs> Keep reading. Oh, this is just showing you a demonstration of an example puzzle. Keep reading. Ah, what digit in place of B would make this sum true? I was like, oh, there's a read more button. So looking, I don't know why I couldn't figure this out. B plus six ends in a one, so we must have B equals five. Oh, this is not, ah, look at me, on my mind, this is why I like looking at these challenges. I very, in a very silly way, was looking at these as two different independent operations. It is not. This is a, you know, a number, 15 plus 56, right? 15, five plus six is 11, carry the one, 5 plus 1 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So 71. So that's how this works. The idea, we can do it with multiplication, and we can keep looking at these. So here's today's challenge. E is even, C is odd, what is B? Even, odd, or could be even or odd. So I'm going to give you five minutes. You can sign up for brilliant.org at slash coding train, um, and uh, put your answer in there, and I'll come back and um, Maybe I'll have read one of the explanations or I'll think it through a little bit <laughs> and we'll provide the answer. So I'll be right back in just a few minutes. Muting my mic. Gonna disappear myself first, actually. And then muting my mic. If you have an answer to this, uh, rather than me solve it today, given uh, maybe I can get a nice like chat message that uh, explains the answer very quickly, uh, and I'll read it. 
I see people are discussing it, which is kind of fun. So I'm going to come back now just because I want to get back to the RDP algorithm. But um, so this is, there's some great uh, explanations in the chat. So let's think about this for a second. C, okay, C is odd. E is even. So A has to be odd. A has to be an odd number. Now, uh, the question now becomes, um, <coughs> If C, let's see. Oh, look at this. Whoa, <laughs> so that's good. That's a start. <laughs> um, Simon is, th thankfully Simon is going to help me out here, I think, uh, typing out his solution. I think the, the, the thing that you have to think about is you, there's a carry the one possibility here. So for example, if there were, if this was something like there was no number, none of these digits ever added up to anything greater than nine, um, then we would. Then there would be one, only one possible answer, because if uh, we just said that, um, sorry, uh, what did I say? A is C is odd, E is even. A has to be odd. C is odd, A is odd. That means B has to be even. B would have to be even, but not necessarily, because if there were some set of numbers where you carry the one, then B could be odd. I think, I mean, uh, without doing an example, I think you could do it either way, right? We, does, does that make sense? I'm, I'm intuitively, I think it's even or odd. We know that even plus even equals even, and odd plus odd equals even, and even plus odd equals odd. Uh, whoa, lots of answers in the chat. Are streams saved after ending? Yes, they are. Right. But my intuitive understanding of this, which I think, which Nilesh just wrote, could be both, as there can be a carry on the leftmost digit. So I don't even have to worry about the middle, because um, I just know that A, there, there can't be a carry on the rightmost digit, because that's where we're starting. So A has to be, E is even, C is odd, A has to be odd. A has to be odd, C has to be odd, so B would have to be odd unless there's a carry, then it could be even. All right, I'm going to say both. I hope I'm right. Uh, but Simon just wrote in the chat, B can be even or odd. So if Simon got it, I know I'm right. <laughs> One of these, uh, it'd be better for me to get these things wrong, actually, because that's really what learning is is getting things wrong and, and having a discussion about it. Actually, and just a shout out to the math teacher at my son's school, this is what he did with the students. So he puts a problem up on the board. All the students do it. They write the answer on a piece of paper without their name. Everybody turns those in. And then um, uh, he picks one randomly that was incorrect. So what's, what I loved about that idea is it's not singling anybody out, but it's then having a discussion about what was wrong, which is so beautiful. So um, there we go. Thank you once again to, I'm just very proud of my technology here, uh, Brilliant.org for being today's live stream sponsor. Okay, so back to, <laughs> back to the RDP algorithm. I have some water, which isn't, uh, I think I need to eat a bigger breakfast on, if I'm going to live stream in the morning, so I'm feeling very, a little bit woozy. All right. I think I understand what's going on here. Uh, I think I, I 
think I have an idea for how I can make this happen. I think this isn't actually the RDP algorithm. What this function is, should be called is find furthest. Right? This is a function to find the furthest point given a list of points with a start and end index. The RDP algorithm should be an algorithm that returns, or I could actually just, pa I can pass in the array. So even though it makes sense for it to return it, since it's recursive, I'm going to actually just pass in the array. I'm going to have a function called RDP, which gets uh, all points and an, um, the another point array called RDP. Hmm, how do I want to do this? I think I want to pass in, I, in a way I just want all points to be global. It will make things much easier. But I, if I'm doing this correctly, I really should have the array take it. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stick with that. Uh, RDP array list of RDP, uh, I can't think of a name for this variable that's not RDP points, but I guess that's fine. Um, No, but I want to, oh, I'm so lost here. Let me get this line distance out of the way. Recursion is hard, especially when you're live streaming. And I, I feel a lot of pressure. I, I hate how long these are. Uh, have fun, Spike 500. <laughs> uh. So I'm going to call this point function, oh, yay, uh, no, but this is silly. No, I do want to call this over and over again. And then, like, basically what I want to say is, yeah, uh, let, me, let me think about this for a second. Comment this out for a second. I'm going to call this find furthest. All right. That's the index. And then next, next point is all points get. And then if next point, if the, um, oh, I need that distance. OK. Record distance. If record distance is less than epsilon, greater than epsilon. If it's greater than epsilon, return furthest index. Otherwise, return negative 1. Right? I need an exit condition. So as long as it's actually that distance is greater, return the furthest distance. And then here, I'm going to say, if next index uh, is not e is greater than zero, then uh, RDP points, uh, then next point, then RDP points add uh, all points get next index. And then, So I think the problem is I have to go both ways. So this, why am I stuck here? <laughs> holy, holy shiftman. <laughs> I did not invent that. You can tweet at Redfoo who <laughs> came up with that sound effect. Um, 
I was about passing the new array as input output in my pseudocode. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm having trouble like finding the recursive moment here. So then what I want to do, because I have to do this, because I, I could just do this, right? While next index is greater than zero, RDP points add all points get next index. And then I could just say this. Uh, all points between start index and next index. And uh, next index and end index. So, but this doesn't work. This is where the recursion needs to happen. So this has to be a function. Yeah, okay. Let's try making this a function, just for a second, called RDP, and it gets start in, oh, the camera went on, why is this happening? Why? 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 So sad. This is like the old days. I thought I, with all my new equipment, if I just unplug and replug it in, it doesn't work. Uh, is it like overheating, do we think? Could that be an issue? And now, of course, at least I know what's going on here. Close enough. Um, okay. Not function, sorry. Void RDP start index end index. Then I want uh, all points and RDP points. I mean, I could just keep those global, but let's, let's do this correctly. And then, um, okay, so start index equals zero. Ah, I got it, I got it, I got it, got it, got it. I got it, I think. <laughs> start, uh, no, 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 no. So now, let's add those. Then let's call RDP. Zero, a start, no. Zero total minus one, all points, RDP points. And then uh, next index is find the furthest. If it's greater than zero, then, uh, then call, there we go, RDP this. Start index, next index, all points. I mean, it's a little silly to have these arrays here, but I'm going to just keep going with it. RDP points. And this. Uh, uh, start, oh, let's start index. Uh, next index. End index. All right, I think my logic is sound here. So there's the find furthest function, which just gives me the index to the point that's furthest away uh, between, in, a, in a list of points between A and B. So first, I'm going to just call it and, go and give, do the whole list. Then as long as it's a valid point, um, I'm going to add it and then check the other two ways. And I should also say, I mean, I, this is a little weird, but if, as long as start index, I, there's probably a more elegant way of doing this, but let me just write it this way for a second. If start index is not equal to next index, like if they're the same, I don't want to do it. And same thing here. If end index 
is not equal to that. And I could probably do a greater than or something because I don't want to go past it. But this is all, I'm protecting myself here. Like I want to make sure that I have, uh, it'll exit even if epsilon is zero. So let's just say, like this should actually work um, if the distance is always 100, right? So I don't, I need the actual, but if I run this right now, I believe my RDP should be the, 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 the reduced fidelity line curve should be the same because I'm not actually, actually calculating the line distance, right? Ep uh. Both of these cameras are going off. Do you think they're overheating? Is that a thing? It, basically, I'm creating a, uh, a <laughs> basically, I'm creating like a fake scenario where all the points are always within 100 pixels, so they're all above epsilon. They'll always all be kept, I think. So I can test if my recursion is working. <laughs> Infinite loop, recursion not working. Stop. Time out. Yay. Stop. I'm so close to being having this. There we go. Okay. Oh, it can't. Oh, it can't. Ah. So my exit conditions are all wrong. If next index is bigger than negative one, you return negative one on fail and zero is a valid index, though the first. Greater than zero is buggish. Where to, oh yeah. Oh, this shouldn't be while. This should be, oh, first of all. <laughs> first main problem, this shouldn't be while. I had a while loop in there because I was thinking about it looping, but the looping is the recursion. So this should be an if. I should also just say, just to be like really specific about this right now, as long as it's not equal to negative one. Also, I don't know that these are going to become equal. Not, these are always going to be not equal because, um, no, it would be negative one if they're, let's see, let's just try this now. So I find the one, I find the one, yeah, let's, yeah, ooh, there we go. Let me go back to that. <laughs> Just to give a more clean correction there. <laughs> this is definitely the problem here. Uh, I, I had a while loop in there before because I was thinking about the RDP loop. Do this again and again and again. But that's before I implemented the recursive algorithm of the function calling itself. This is just an if statement. As long as I get a valid index, um, then, um, then, add the, then, then add the points and call the function again. And this should work. Now, why do I still have this line in there? Um, right, I should just have, it's not closing it. I'm adding like, wait, hold on. Let me take out, let me take out adding start and end for a second. Yeah. Do I not need to add the start and end point? Hmm, interesting. Oh, it's size. Let me debug this for a second. No, I'm missing two points. Oh, ah, <laughs> I know why. I put them in the, uh, okay. Here we go. Ah, the camera! But I figured out, this is making me crazy. It's gotta be, it's gotta be something to do with the uh, temperature, right? Do I need like a, I need better ventilation. It's very warm in this room. I need better ventilation. I 
Because they're not, there's, you got to look up. The reason why it was drawing this weird extra line is because I put, I put the start point, then I put the end point, then I put this point. So I, my actual line is drawing like this. So what I actually need to do, which is quite lovely, is first add the start point, then perform the RDP algorithm, then add the end point. There we go. So I have this working where the RDP algorithm, the Raymer Douglas Poiker algorithm just adds all the points because it's not actually calculating the distance. Luckily for me, I have worked through this line distance problem before. And in fact, if you refer to my Nature of Code book in chapter six, I work on a particular algorithm that is related to path following. So in a path following algorithm, I have the start I have a line segment that has a start and an end, and I have a vehicle that's moving at a given velocity. So part of the algorithm involves projecting out its future location and finding the normal from the point to the line. So I actually have already written a code example that does this, and I would encourage you to pause here and maybe go look at this chapter if you want further explanation. But in the interest of time, <laughs> and I can come back and do this, I actually already have this uh, example ready to go here, which shows this scalar projection. So I, this is showing if I have two points A and B and another point C, I can always find the normal point of the line. This is called scalar projection because you can imagine if I bring this down here for myself, if I had a light, <laughs> if this were a flashlight, oh, I can't do this. Ah, if this were a flashlight shining down, it would cast a shadow there and I would find that's like a projection onto, from, three, from 2D into 1D really. Okay, so I should be actually be able to just take this exact function, which is called scalar projection, which gives a, um, starts with a point P, which is uh, C in this case, and calculates the scalar projection between A and B. So let's do that. Scalar projection, um, and it has to do with the dot product and all this sort of stuff. So I'm gonna um, come back here, and I'm gonna paste this in here. In the code, I can give myself more room here. So I want to find, I'm going to call this the normal point is the scalar projection between C, A, and B. And then I just need to return uh, the distance, the P vector distance between C, that point C, and the normal point. So that's actually the line distance. Um, Give, my, give me a minute here to erase. Hold on, I have this, I think if I use some water, I'm just actually taking the water that I'm drinking. Yeah, I'm gonna wash it. How are we doing on time, everybody? So again, if I have point C, I have point A, I have point B, my function that uses the dot product calculates this point, which I'm naming norm. Hi, norm. <laughs> You're such a nice point, norm. And then that is the normal point. So now the distance between C and norm is exactly this particular distance that I've been looking for. So I dare I say that this is going to work. I doubt it. Let's just run it. Why not? Especially if I use this, the, the drum roll, that means it's not going to work. I got sad trombone ready. Oh! What? It kind of looks like it did, definitely did something. That is nuts! That is amazing! It worked! Let's now, okay, 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 okay. So it does it just once. Let's try different epsilons. Epsilon of one. 
Ooh. Oh, it's adding stuff in the wrong order. That's weird. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so the same problem I had, oh my God, with adding the start and then the end, this is now happening over and over. This is now happening for every single one. Oh, okay. So I need to do the adding. Hmm. Do I, can I just do it in between? If I just do it in between, well that, oh, the camera. God. I'm definitely going to have to figure this out. Hold on, let me make sure. Let me get back to where I was. Sorry, everybody. I wish I knew this has not happened to me before. But I have, I was going to say I haven't live streamed this long, but I certainly have. Very frustrating. I'm getting good at focusing. You look at where I'm adding the point. I think if I just add, for I think if I add it in between these two checks, then everything's going to like sort of ripple into the array in the correct order. Let's see. I need to add the point there. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay, we've really got it now. So now I need. I want this to animate. So um, let me. How am I going to animate it? So I need to do this, this particular algorithm in draw. And I don't need, uh, that's actually interesting to see. There were 43 points, oh you can't see that. There were 43 points left. Okay, this is so exciting. Um, I love doing an algorithm that I've never done before and having it actually work, even though this took me like two hours. <laughs> the version that you're watching is hopefully much shorter. Uh, <clears throat> so this needs to happen in draw. And RDP points has to be recreated every time. That's a new, so I'm doing this over and over again. So I'm every, every time through draw, I'm starting with a fresh array before I draw everything. And then, um, so that's good. So this, this should now work, right? Now all I need to do is change the epsilon. So if I start with an epsilon, what happens if I have an epsilon of zero? There we go. And now, and if I go back to the Wikipedia page, epsilon, they're kind of showing an animation. Oh, and it's showing n, the number of points. Epsilon is kind of, well, that, that's fine. I'm going to just make up my own thing. So I'm going to have an epsilon. I believe 10, by the way, I seem to remember 10 pixels was the correct epsilon for the sketch RNN model I referred to at the beginning of this video. But so I'm going to start with epsilon at 0. And I'm going to say, uh, here, epsilon plus equal 0 0.01. And then I'll just say if epsilon is greater than 10, let's just set epsilon back equal to 0. Let me see what happens here. Are we seeing it change? It's very hard to detect this, but we are, it is there. What did I do? The stroke weight of 2, stroke weight of 4. Um, I wonder if I actually would be better if they were the same. And here's the thing. There's, let me get rid of this, and let me say full screen. Oh, and I should draw. Let me just draw. Just to really finish this out, to polish it, um, let me say uh, fill 255, text size 64 point, 64 point font, uh, text epsilon, and I'll just put it sort of arbitrarily in the window. Uh, and then I'm also going to say uh, RDP points dot size. And I'll put that um, like 100 pixels further down. And I should say, uh, you know, epsilon Let me just clean this up a little bit. 
and I'm using number format. I don't want and let's It's not super visible. Maybe what I want actually is this one to be pink. Yeah, we can see this happening now. I'm trying to think of a way to make this visually more obvious. I guess I'm just, maybe I'm overthinking it. What time is it, by the way? Oh, I'm perfect timing. Um, zoom into viewport. Like, like, do I just want to have them actually be like stroke weight one? Maybe a different curve. I guess I could shift it a little bit. There we go. I like seeing that. That's kind of cool. Like, what if I did, uh, this is kind of interesting, translate, what if I did, like, translate 0, negative 10, and then, like, what if I just shift them by, like, 10 pixels? Yeah, that's kind of interesting. and set the stroke weight back up to four. All right, so I offset the drawing of each of these curves to try to make it more visually apparent what's going on. You can see the epsilon value is being displayed up there. It's going to go up to 10. I should let it get much higher, actually. Um, and then you can just sort of see the resolution of the curve slowly changing, the fidelity of the curve as epsilon increases. Let's just, to, for the sake of argument, let's uh, just so you can see this, let, let me actually um, just for the sake of argument, so that you can see this, I'm going to have it go up. Whoops. <laughs> Just for the sake of argument, so you can see this more easily, I'm going to have this go up much faster, and then I'm going to let epsilon go all the way up to 100. So this now, we should really see the approximation of the curve uh, go way, 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 way. And in fact, <laughs> maybe that offsetting is silly. So what I've done here to really demonstrate it is I have epsilon going up much, much faster and all the way up to 100 pixels. So you can see I'm now approximating this curve with only seven points. And I don't know if it's going to ever get less than seven as it gets up to 100. It starts over. So now you can see it very, very quickly reducing the number of points um, in the curve. Thank you so much for watching this coding challenge. Raymer Douglas Poiker algorithm. Stay tuned for how this gets implemented, hopefully, into the ML5JS library and a example of an interactive sketch RNN drawing application um, uh, makes use of this particular algorithm. And uh, so what I would encourage you to do is make, can you find a creative use of this? As a technical exercise, make a version where the user draws and you alter the fidelity of what they're drawing. But maybe there are some other things you could try that are more artistic by layering different fidelities with different colors. I don't know. I can't imagine. I hope that you come up with something. Share it in the, the codingtrain.com in the link that you'll find in this video's description. And I will show uh, community contributions on the next live stream. We're going to keep this in because something's going wrong with my cameras. I'm so frustrated.
I'm back. The cameras are shutting off again. That's always a mystery here on The Coding Train. See you in the next coding challenge. Goodbye. All right. <laughs> yes, me, I am so me, right? Is it the point of the algorithm to make it not visually obviously different? Yes. So I think the, the value of epsilon is really the question. But I want to be able to see that it's working. And Simon's telling me once again, to animate a recursive algorithm would be much easier to use a generated function. OK. Uh, I'm going to just say a few things before I go. Um, Um, I really want to hear for a couple things. One is let me um, let me look at one community contribution because I really want to do that every live stream. Um, and so I think that I'm going to figure out new systems for doing this. But this right now is the current system. That um, and uh, let me just do that. Whoa! Hit refresh. Um, and I'm going to spin this well. So this is the current system. I'm going to come up with some new systems. But this is going to. Uh, Pick a number, um, and that number is tied to a spreadsheet with a list of community contributions. And when we land on one, I have no idea what it's going to be. It's number 46, it looks like. I'm going to click uh, View Selected, and we got, oh, ah, nothing makes me happier than a uh, 10 print um, variation. And let me view it here. Oh, it's, it's a YouTube video, and it's got music. Crawler function to solve the maze. Are you kidding me? I hope I'm not going to get a copyright strike with whatever this music is. I'm going to mute it just in case. Oh, look at that. That is so cool. Wow, I have no, I guess I have a, um, Example that does the like A star algorithm. This is not an actual. What's it? What I love about this is I thought like, well, you can never do this because it's not an actual maze. It's a maze-like pattern, but it just has lots of, you know, dead ends. But looks to me, my guess here is that the creator of this, um, Wolfgang, um, has made a decision that whenever it gets stuck at a dead end, to just leap over the wall and pick a new color. And this is really, I think there's a lot of beautiful possibilities that could come out of this. This is amazing. So I'm so glad. I look at all the community contributions, or I try to, but I don't remember them all. And this is actually just like discovering them as these delightful things is amazing. Ah, I love this. I want to try to make this. I'm not going to because this is something that this person made, and I don't need to make it. It can live here as this person's beautiful work. Thank you uh, for this wonderful contribution. Speaking of which, Am I a member of my own YouTube channel? Just curious here. This is the live stream right now that you're watching. 308 people are watching. We'll press my choo-choo button. Um, if I go and switch, I shouldn't do this. Hold on a sec. Um, just for a second here. I want us to give you a sneak preview, unless it's already been like tweet it or anything like that. Um, oh, I have all these messages. OK, never mind. Um, just don't worry. I, I was trying to sneak preview something. Oh, I can do this. Uh, hold on. Don't Just wait a second. I'm going to give you a little sneak preview because I'm so excited about this. Those of you who are watching this live can enjoy this. Ah, here we go. Sneak preview. Okay, now wait, hold on. I want you to hear the sound. So I'm just all changing my sound settings for a second. Multi output device. And. And I'm going to bring myself back. All right, so this is a video, a new style of video that I'm doing from my home uh, in Brooklyn. Uh, it's called, it's a new series. I only made one of these. Maybe it's terrible. Everybody will hate it. And I actually have made two. Ah, so at a minimum, I'm just going to uh, 
take myself off here. At a minimum, so you're just going to hear me talking, sorry. At a minimum, um, there'll be two. <laughs> Unless everyone really hates it, then I won't bother to publish the second one. But this is a coding challenge that I'm doing in a different setting. Um, and I'm just going to play you the first couple minutes of it. Uh, and then I'll later today release the whole thing. I'm not, I could play the whole 13 minutes, but that seems silly. Oh, there's an ad on it? But I'm logged in as myself. So if I'm logged in myself, I have premium. Oh, I can't hear this. Can you hear this? No, you can't hear this. Oh, it's muted. Cabana. Hold on. Let's try this again. Hello, and welcome to the pilot episode of a new series on the coding train. Choo-choo. Don't have my train whistle called Coding in the Cabana. Here I am, seated in the cabana. I've got a camera here, I've got a camera here, and what I'm going to attempt to tackle for you today is something that... All right, oh, I'm not visible. So um, that, the, I'm gonna do the Mara Rose. It's about, it's edited, it's about 13 minutes. I guess I could put the camera back on to say goodbye, but I've gotta go now, I've got a meeting in 15 minutes, um, and uh, I encourage you to check out that video later. Here comes the choo-choo. So here we go. Goodbye. I'll, I'll try to answer a few questions while I... Whoa, what is going on? It's so much louder all of a sudden. Quieting that down. So goodbye, everybody. I'm going to save this. Quit this. I'm going to hit stop recording. Can you still hear me? I think you can. And so thank you, everybody. Sorry that I've disappeared. I don't feel like dealing with the camera again. Oh, I could, I could go over here. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's live stream. Oh, this is nice. I can come. I hope you enjoyed today's live stream. I had to talk to you. So I'm looking at the confidence monitor, which is slightly above. But if I look here, I'm talking to you. Thank you so much. Your, I, I hear from people. Um, um, about how they watch the channel and how they made a project or they learned coding and it really makes me very happy. I feel sort of honored and humbled by uh, the amount of people who have been watching stuff and enjoying it. So I really appreciate um, all the viewers. Thank you to members and patrons for their extra support. But everybody in my eyes is uh, making a contribution, even if you just never even heard of the coding train and you're at home and you're, you're doing something good for the world, you're making a contribution. But just, just by watching or by sending me a nice message is really nice. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm gonna go, and, and so I'm, um, next week, next Friday morning, I don't know. I, it's only gonna be, one, this week was an exception of two streams. It's gonna be one per week. Um, and uh, I don't, haven't established a regular time yet, but probably um, next Friday. Goodbye. Let me see if there's any questions. Uh, Ace of Hearts asks, will you make a 30-minute version of this live stream? So I don't know. Um, so yes, definitely. There will be an edited version of called the Coding Challenge, RDP, whatever. Um, that's, maybe that's what I'll call it. Um, and that will be edited down. If I had to guess, maybe more like 45 minutes. <laughs> uh, you know, it's always a complicated balance to like trim it down. But the point of the coding train is to show you the whole process from start to finish. So I don't really like to cut out debugging, but I, I cut out the like the cameras going off and me taking a break to go use the bathroom, <laughs> all that stuff. Um, so yeah, that'll come out. It, it, it often takes at least a week for that to come out. Um, thanks. If, uh, I, uh, yeah. Are your lights heating up the camera? I think they might be. I think that might be what's going on.
dot. I'm going to do the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, the this dot song. Never forget the this dot. <laughs> Somebody compose that song for me. Thank you. 